If only they just practiced these exercises for 10 minutes a day, they would not have lost any of that progress. Hello, my sax playing friend, Alexander here from saxophonemasterclass.com. In today's lesson, I want to explain to you how much you should be practicing on the saxophone, especially as a beginner, especially if you're just starting and you're wondering how much do I need to practice? How much do I need to play in order to achieve the goals that I have on the saxophone? Well, I'm here to answer those questions and I'm here to show you how you can practice smarter, not harder on the saxophone as well. And it all has to do with focusing on three different elements of saxophone playing. You've got to focus on your tone, you've got to focus on your scales, and you've got to focus on your technique. I'm going to explain what I mean by all of those things in today's lesson. But before I get into all of that, you should definitely go ahead and check out my Essential Saxophone Warm-Ups Guide, which is going to go through a lot of the things I'm going to discuss today. It's completely free and it's going to give you step-by-step -step guidance on what you should be doing in your practice sessions and give you ideas of what to practice on the saxophone. So you can get that totally free. It's a PDF that you can download right away. Just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash warmups and you'll be able to follow along with this video a lot better as well. So the first thing I tell my saxophone students is it's better to practice for 10 minutes a day over six days than to practice for an hour one day and not practice the other five days. So if you have an hour a week to practice, that's fine. Just make sure you're doing 10 minutes every day rather than just one hour in one day. You're gonna see a lot more progress on the saxophone if you're used to practicing every day, if you spend 10 minutes every day, as opposed to picking it up once a week. This is also gonna get you into the habit of getting the sax out of your case every day, getting you to play every day, developing your muscle memory on a daily basis. Even if you can only do this five days a week, it's so much better than doing 50 minutes in one day or an hour in one day and not playing the rest of the days. And what happens is once you're in this daily discipline of just doing 10 minutes a day with simple exercises, which I'm gonna show you in this video, then you're gonna realize some days you're gonna have a lot longer than 10 minutes. You're gonna have 20 minutes, you're gonna have 30 minutes. You may even have an hour and you're gonna see so much more progress if you just keep this daily discipline. Like I said, it's good to take one or two days off a week, but if you can do five times a week playing 10 minutes a day, this really is the foundation for improving faster on the saxophone. So I'm gonna show you what you should be practicing in those 10 minutes, but I'm also gonna show you what you could be practicing in 30 minutes a day as well. You wanna make sure you're touching on these foundational principles of the saxophone, which are tone, scales, and technique, and giving enough time to each of these things. If you just focus on these three aspects, you're gonna see a lot more improvement over a short period of time. So let's start with 10 minutes a day. What's the number one thing you should work on? If you only have 10 minutes a day on the saxophone, you should be working on your tone. You should be working on your breathing, your embouchure, and your throat. And this is what I call the BET saxophone tone system. You need to practice different exercises that focus on these different muscles. When it comes to your breathing, you gotta focus on your diaphragmatic support. You gotta focus on training your diaphragm muscle to take in air so you can get a great big full sound on the saxophone. You also need to focus on your embouchure. Make sure you have your embouchure correct. Make sure you're positioning everything right. And then practice different exercises that help you develop your embouchure muscles. And then if you have more time, focus on throat manipulation, which is the movement of the back of your throat, the back of your tongue, in order to produce a better sound on the sax. So if you just have 10 minutes a day, you need to focus on these foundational aspects. And you can actually do these without the saxophone. So I could put my saxophone down right now and just take this mouthpiece and neck and focus on these exercises. You have 10 minutes a day, just focus on practicing your embouchure, practicing your breast support, and then if you have time, try to work on your throat muscles. I'll show you those exercises as well. So if you have 10 minutes a day, just spend a few minutes breathing with big, full diaphragmatic breath, like this. Do that 10 times before you start playing with the mouthpiece and neck. Build that foundation of great breast support. If you want to learn more about exactly how to do this, I have an entire video on it and I'll link to it at the end of this lesson. And there's also a link in the description of this video as well. But if you practice this every day, this is going to really help with improving on the saxophone faster. Just practicing these breathing exercises 
every single day developing this new way of breathing so you can get a big full tone on the saxophone. So once you've done that for a few minutes, then you want to move on to practicing with just the mouthpiece and neck. So this is really important. You just want to practice developing your embouchure muscles while simultaneously focusing on your breath support. So we're just going to start by playing long tones with just the mouthpiece and neck. You can tongue the beginning of the note as well, but you take a big deep diaphragmatic breath beforehand while focusing on developing your embouchure muscles and having the correct embouchure position. So we're trying to keep the tone as steady as possible, we're tonguing the beginning of the note and we're trying to get enough breath support so we can get a full consistent tone with just the mouthpiece and neck. If you do this for just another 3-4 minutes when you have that 10 minutes a day, this is actually going to be the best thing to practice. And if you do, you're going to see a massive improvement, you're going to see massive progress in your saxophone playing. So it's super productive, it's super simple and it only requires a few minutes a day. If you have a little more time or if you haven't quite filled those 10 minutes, take the mouthpiece off the neck and start practicing the same exercises with your mouthpiece, like this. Okay, so it's a little harder to do. You're not gonna be able to hold it for as long as the other exercises with the neck as well. But just doing this exercise is also gonna help with improving your muscle memory in your embouchure. It's gonna help with your breast support and it's gonna help with developing your throat muscles as well. You're engaging a lot more of your throat when you're doing these exercises. And the next step to this is to then start trying to manipulate your throat to start bending the note with the mouthpiece. This is an unusual exercise, but it has a very, very strong impact on your saxophone playing. So the way it works is you say e -a -e. You change the vowel sound, you can feel the throat manipulating. E -a -e. And when you do this while you're playing the mouthpiece, it actually changes the pitch. And so this is a great exercise. Just try to change the pitch up and down with the mouthpiece like this. Okay, so I'm not dropping my jaw, I'm not changing my embouchure, I'm just manipulating my throat to create that change of pitch on the mouthpiece. So this is quite difficult, this is for more advanced saxophone players, maybe don't do this if you're in the complete beginning stages, but again, if you just have 10 minutes, if you focus on your breast support, if you focus on mouthpiece and neck exercises, if you get a few more minutes to just focus on the mouthpiece exercises. If you just do this five days a week for 10 minutes a day, you're gonna see an improvement. You're gonna see progress. And more importantly, you're not gonna lose progress. A lot of people, they'll be making progress and then they'll stop playing for two weeks, come back and it feels like they've gone backwards. It feels like they've lost all the progress they made. If only they just practiced these exercises for 10 minutes a day, they would not have lost any of that progress. So this is what I would practice when you have 10 minutes. I'm going to move on now to playing with the rest of the instrument and we're going to talk about how scales are the next thing you need to be focusing on if you just have another 10 minutes to practice every day. So I'm going to grab the saxophone here, put the mouthpiece back on. And so the next thing you want to be practicing is scales. You want to focus on one or two scales in your practice sessions. If you've never practiced your scales before, this is a great opportunity to start learning your scales and start understanding why they're so important. Now, if you're a complete beginner, I have another video that takes you through your first scale, which is G major. Is a link to that at the end of this lesson. And if you're more advanced, you can actually download my saxophone scale cheat sheets, which take you through all the different scales, all the letter names, all the notation of all the major scales, of all the minor scales, including harmonic minor, melodic minor, and natural minor, 
or the major pentatonic scales or the minor pentatonic scales and all the blues scales. It's all notated, it's all written out in letter form as well and these are little cheat sheets to help you with learning your scales on a saxophone. Just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash scales and you can download that for free right now. So once you've done these tone exercises and warm up exercises for 10 minutes you can move on to focusing on a scale and we're going to focus on G major just as an example and the way you want to practice it is by just playing it in one octave if you're a beginner. If you're more advanced you want to try and play it across the whole range of the saxophone and this is just a great next step in your practice session. No matter what level you're at I still practice my scales. I still focus on tone exercises and then pick a scale and try to practice it across the whole range of the instrument because this is important for developing your muscle memory in your fingers and it's going to be important for learning new songs. It's going to be important for improvising on the sax as well. So if you're practicing G major you want to start by just practicing very simply an octave ascending and descending tonguing every note just like this. But once you've worked on a scale that you already know, you want to move on to another scale that you don't know. You need to move on to new scales that are a little more difficult that you can start practicing and learning step by step. So I'm going to show you a great little technique that you can use to start learning new scales. So let's say, for example, you don't know the scale F major. Well, the three-step process of learning F major on the saxophone or any scale on the saxophone is first of all, learn the letter names. So if you want to learn F major, first of all, look at my saxophone scale cheat sheets where you're going to see F major written out in letter form. So once you have the letter names down, cover it over, get it into your mind, close your eyes, remember the notes F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. Once you have that in your mind, then do it backwards. E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. So you get the whole scale in your mind. You get the letter names in your mind before you move on to step two. So that's the first step. The second step is then to find the notes on the saxophone. So we're going to do the same thing. So we have F, we have G, we have A, we have B flat, we have C, we have D with the octave key, we have E with the octave key, and then we land back on F again. This is not another note in the scale, it's just the same note that we started on, but this time we're pressing the octave key. So we just say the letter names as we're going through the fingerings. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Then backwards, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. And that's the second step in the process. This is the easiest way to memorize your saxophone scales. You just say the letter names as you're playing the fingering. So you're not even playing the scale yet. And this is going to make it so much easier to develop the muscle memory for the scale that you're trying to learn. The third step then is to play it. You already have the fingerings. You already have the letter names. Now we can just play the scale. <laughs> And now we've learned a new scale. It's as simple as that. This is the three-step process. This is the thing that you should be doing in your practice sessions after you've worked on your tone for 10 minutes. Start focusing on a new scale. Start focusing on old scales that you've learned and then start learning new scales on the saxophone. So then you have the foundation for learning new songs in these different keys that use these different scales. So that's the second core principle that you should be focusing on in your practice sessions. That's if you get 20 minutes to practice on the saxophone. If you get 30 minutes to practice on the sax, you then want to move on to improving your technique. Now what I mean by technique is improving your rhythm, improving your articulations on the sax, and improving your dexterity in your fingers. I call this the rad technique system. And so there's a few different ways to focus on these different aspects of technique. So when it comes to rhythm, there's a foundational thing that you should be practicing in order to improve rhythm with the saxophone and that's just simply getting a metronome and being able to clap to it. So first of all you want to get a metronome and you can actually get one on your smartphone but if you don't have a smartphone you can get one on Amazon. I have links in the description of this video but I have one here on my phone and all you have to do is set it to a very slow tempo such as 60 BPM. So we're going to start with 60 and all we're going to do is clap 
to the metronome. And so that's 60 BPM. So what we're going to do is clap along to this, which is a simple exercise, but it's not an easy exercise. It actually takes a lot, especially if you're a beginner, to develop the ability to clap along perfectly in time to a metronome that you know is perfectly in time. So I'm going to turn it on again, 60 BPM, and we're going to clap along to it once per beat. Now it's important not to tap your foot here. It's important not to move around too much. You just wanna focus on clapping in time to the metronome. And although it seems simple, this is really improving your internal rhythm, which in turn is gonna make it easier to be in time to play with good rhythm on the saxophone. So the next step to this is to then go back to just playing with the mouthpiece and neck. Okay, so we're gonna go back to this, put our metronome at 60 BPM, and then we're gonna to tongue every single note. We're gonna to tongue on every beat using just the mouthpiece and neck. So we're gonna start at 60 BPM again. And we're gonna to tongue every note. So again, this is a simple exercise, but it's not easy to get perfectly in time while tonguing the mouthpiece and neck to a metronome is difficult. And to really know if you're doing this correctly, you need to record yourself and listen back to see if you are actually doing it. A lot of people don't notice if they go off the metronome, they don't notice if they're playing in time to it. So you need to record yourself, use any sort of recording device, see if you're playing in time. And if you can't do that with just the mouthpiece and neck, you're gonna find it really difficult to do it with the rest of the saxophone. And this is the articulations part of my RAD technique system. You're working on your rhythm, R, and then you're working on your articulations, which means your tonguing technique using rhythm. So you're actually trying to play your articulations in time. Now we're gonna move on to dexterity. So we're gonna use the rest of the saxophone and we're gonna take that scale that we worked on now we need to internalize it and improve the dexterity in our fingers while playing F major. And so this will be the next thing you do. You practice F major at 60 BPM, tonguing every note up and down the saxophone like this. And now we are improving our technique on the saxophone. Now we're focusing in on improving our rhythm, our articulations, and our dexterity in our fingers. And this is the third core principle of what you should be practicing on the saxophone when you get more time. And all of these three things are gonna help with learning new songs, it's gonna help you with improvising more fluently on the saxophone, and you're just gonna be more comfortable with the saxophone as well. You're gonna have a deeper connection to the saxophone by practicing these three core principles, tone, scales, and technique. So that's the foundation of what you should be practicing on a saxophone. Obviously, if you get more time beyond that, you wanna practice your favorite songs, you wanna learn new songs, but you wanna make sure that you're preparing to learn those songs using these techniques. You wanna make sure you're preparing by warming up with tone exercises. You wanna make sure you're practicing a scale that maybe that song that you're learning uses. So if the song is in the key of F major and it uses the scale of F major, you wanna practice F major before you start working on that song. It's gonna make it so much easier. And then finally, you wanna practice your technique, your rhythm, your articulations, improve the dexterity in your fingers, because that's also gonna make it easier to learn that new song in the key of F major. So if you get 30 minutes a day, try to divide up your practice session into these three core principles. 10 minutes for tone exercises, 10 minutes for focusing on your scales, and 10 minutes for focusing on your technique. If you get more time, if you get an hour, you can double the time that you spend on each of these things. 20 minutes on tone, 20 minutes on scales, 20 minutes on technique, 
or you can just move on to learning a song for that extra 30 minutes of that hour. So you focus on tone, scales, and technique 10 minutes each, and then you spend 30 minutes focusing on a new song or learning a new song, or just having fun and playing to your favorite backing tracks. So I really hope you found this helpful. I really hope you have a better understanding of what you should be practicing when you get time. I really hope you start practicing those 10 minutes a day with those fundamental exercises I showed you at the beginning, because that's gonna really maintain your progress on the sax. If you stop practicing for a week, two weeks, you're gonna diminish your progress. You're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna get annoyed at yourself and I don't want that to happen. Remember, I give you a lot of different ways to warm up using these different core principles inside my essential saxophone warm-ups guide and you can get that for free at saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash warm-ups. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just comment below and let me know what other lessons you'd like to see on this channel. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to get more weekly lessons from me and make sure to click that notification bell so you know exactly when I upload a new video. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Until next time, happy playing.